Biological Field Society is a society of volunteers. Uh, we have, as you'll notice from the date, very significantly, we are about to have our 50th anniversary. So, in anticipation of this, we decided that a project that was our very own, rather than feeding into other people's projects, would be a good idea. So our president, John Lawson, suggested CAMO. And two years ago, I came along and did a one-minute mayhem on CAMO, in which I talked mostly about our work that we intended to do on Camo House. Since then, we've developed the project a bit, and although my project design said three to five years, uh, it now says how long is a bit of string. Camo House was a magnificent building. Um, what's left is a tump a hillock with a little bit of a ruin on it. But what we did was we found out the full extent of the house and it is intended to mark this out on the ground so that passers-by, through interpretation boards, seats with possibly uh, interpretation um, or oral histories with them, they will be able to understand that this was a fabulous manor house. It had 53 rooms. Um, it was the centre of a big estate. But having spent a year and a half finding out where the house was, we moved on to other places. Many people didn't know that this place existed, but on the maps you can see something here from about 1722. But as you can see, it needed some work. We have been working on this small series of vernacular buildings for the last year and a half. It's developing, we cleared the ivy, we cleared the young shoots of trees. It's in an estate that's run by the Natural Heritage and Forestry Division of Edinburgh City Council. So we're only allowed to take out trees smaller than this. So this has caused us a few problems. It is useful, however, to have some trees about, as we have found out, because we also think lunch is important. But Camo is renowned as a dog walker's paradise, so we hang our lunch in the trees. Here we are clearing more of the ivy. Um, what we found was slightly more than Simpson and Brown found when they wrote the management plan, as they did not clear the ivy. Um, and we have a long, low building with three distinct parts to it. Here we're concentrating on what we call the East Wing. And here, a year ago, we put in our first trench. I'm not sure what we were expecting, but we weren't expecting the amount of building rubble that we had to shift. Nor were we expecting the fabulous tiled flagged floor that we found underneath the building rubble. This is high quality flagged floor in a vernacular building known as the offices. And as people here will know, the offices normally mean a buyer, um, possibly a stables, generally where the bothy is, not normally known for fabulous floors. 
not generally known for loads of fireplaces. Especially not fireplaces with the remains of a range in them. So our interest was piqued. We started investigating. What we found underneath the rubble was the most amazing things. We found strange objects. Obviously, some of them had connections with the work of the estate. And some of them, we're still trying to work out what they are. Any ideas about this thing here, please let me know. What we also found in the West Wing was the accoutrements that possibly could be connected with the bottom. This building is now immediately behind the new stables built in 1811. So there is a theory that possibly the stable boys lived at the west end of our building. What we found in the east end was the most amazing collection of bottles. I put a few up here, and I don't know if you can see this one, but it says, Elman's Embrocation. We had Embrocation, we had Seaweed Tonic, we had Lightning Cough Syrup. We begin to think that the person in this end of the building is a bit hypochondriac. Obviously, we found other things as well. We found a range of turn-of-the-century pottery. We found um, cooking pots we found a whole range of jelly moulds. We found the most gorgeous whetstone. Are you beginning to see a pattern here? What we also did while trying to decipher what this place was being used as was make contact throughout the community. So I mentioned that it was run by the City of Edinburgh <coughs> Council's Forestry and Natural Heritage Department. So we talked to them about what they knew of the area. There's a group called the Friends of Camon. They're mostly, again, interested in the natural history of the area. But some of them are locals. And here we get linked to this idea of oral history again as we got the stories from them about what they remembered when they were young going through this area. The University of Edinburgh have classes coming out to Camo to work on the buildings for building recording. Um, we have members of their archaeology society coming to join us in our digs. We've had the Young Archaeologist Club come and take part as well. And we had a wonderful day with Strathmarkin Pirate Primary School, where we split the kids up into three groups. One did geophysics, one group did excavation, and one group did fines washing. Then they all swapped around again. Actually, the fines washing, I think, was probably the most exciting bit of all. They really enjoyed that, and it was very handy for us. Um, we have a dedicated team of diggers. When we started the project, we were digging possibly uh, one weekend a month. We're there every Monday now. And if the weather's bad and we can't dig, we're in the lodge washing fines. 
If I suggest that we have a break over the summer, they grumble. And they are so dedicated that they have shifted nearly all of that building rubble. Adding to the digging in the field is the digging in the archives. And again, we have a dedicated team of archive diggers who have collected the most amazing history of the house, of the estate, and of our building. This is the 19... 01 census and I want you to note that in the building as well as the grand and the great um, we have the servants and obviously the building that we've been working with is more connected with the servants than it is with the grand and the great and the person that I want you to know most about is this lady Margaret Wright she Strangely enough, on this census, she's 56. In the 1911 census, she's 70. Um, I think she might have pretended she was younger to keep her employment. But in the 1911 census, Margaret Wright is the only person on the estate. And she lives in a place called Camo Cottage. And we're convinced that what we have is Camo Cottage. So it's a bit of a shock for Margaret, who's used to the big house. We're not sure if this is a picture of her, but this is a picture of the kitchen she would have worked in. To come down to this, at least the floor was similar. And this is us getting Camo Cottage ready for one of our open days. We have regular open days. Camo is, as I mentioned before, a great place for dog walkers. Hundreds of them. And they like to know about where they're walking. So we put out our stand and we get visitors by the score. I think our best hit was 120 on one day and that's between 10 and 3 so we show them what we've found we show them the story behind what we've found and they're very appreciative one of the reasons that we decided that this was Camo Cottage and Margaret was our cook in residence was little things like you'll notice the hairpins. You'll notice the bracelet. You'll notice the inkwell. This is a lady who came from Aberdeenshire. She must be writing home, I think. Um, a whole range of beautiful things, including a lovely chess set up there. But one of the strange things we keep finding is champagne bottles. We think possibly Margaret, while the family were away, might have had access to the cellar. We show our finds off to visitors. We tell them the story. We hope they're interested and want to come back. Because we're there every Monday, we see the same people quite often, week in, week out. And they tell their friends. Other ways that we communicate are through social media. And I have sitting in the audience my social media team. We have Facebook and Twitter. Joyce here didn't know anything about Twitter till I allocated her the job. <laughs> Maggie didn't know much about websites till she got landed with that job. We've heard quite a lot about Heritage Lottery Fund grants today. 
Maggie is going to be putting up on our website our greatest success yet, which Maria achieved yesterday. We got a grant for £1,150 from Edinburgh Airport, and we're thrilled. The one thing I'll say about the team is they've got a sense of humour. Our project will probably spend the rest of this winter clearing the rest of Camo Cottages. This is where we're going next. This is the building just up the path, which is known as the Piggery. Inside this building, there is a series of steps. It was a two-storey building. I've never heard of a two-storey piggery, have you? If anybody's in the Edinburgh area on a Monday and wants to join us, they would be most welcome. 